Why do some atoms gain electrons while others lose electrons when ionic compounds are formed? Many reactions involve the transfer of electrons from one atom to another. For example, during the synthesis of sodium chloride, sodium atoms donate electrons to the atoms in the chlorine molecule. After the donation, the sodium atoms become positively charged sodium ions, and the chlorine atoms become negatively charged chloride ions. The oppositely charged ions then form an ionic bond. A reaction in which electrons of one atom are transferred to another atom is known as an oxidation reduction reaction, or a redox reaction for short. Combustion and single replacement reactions are always redox reactions because they involve the transfer of electrons. Oxidation occurs when atoms lose electrons during a reaction, which increases the charge. In the reaction that forms sodium chloride, sodium is oxidized when it loses electrons. Notice how the sodium atom starts off with a charge of zero and then has a charge of 1 plus when it loses the electron and becomes a sodium ion. Reduction occurs when an atom gains electrons, which reduces the charge. In the reaction that forms sodium chloride, chlorine is reduced when it gains electrons. Notice how the chlorine atom starts off with a charge of 0 and then has a charge of 1 minus when it gains the electron to become a chloride ion. Oxidation and reduction always occur together. An easy way to remember the difference between oxidation and reduction is to remember oil rig. Oil stands for oxidation is a loss of electrons, and rig stands for reduction is a gain of electrons. Chemists assign special numbers to atoms involved in redox reactions in order to keep track of the transfer of electrons that occurs during the reaction. These numbers are called oxidation numbers. The oxidation number of an uncombined atom is zero. The oxidation number of an atom in an ionic compound is the number of electrons lost or gained by the atom when it forms ions. Oxidation numbers are important when determining which atoms are being oxidized or reduced during a reaction. There are more specific rules for assigning oxidation numbers to the atoms in a reaction. You will learn these rules in another lesson. During the sodium chloride synthesis reaction, the oxidation number for chlorine changes from zero to negative one, since chlorine gains an electron. Chlorine is said to be reduced because the oxidation number is reduced. The oxidation number for sodium changes from zero to positive one, since sodium loses an electron. Sodium is said to be oxidized because the oxidation number is increased. One reactant is called the oxidizing agent and the other is called the reducing agent. By definition, an agent is a person or object that allows something to happen. A travel agent books airline tickets and makes hotel reservations so that his clients can travel. The agent does not go on these trips, but instead allows them to happen. Likewise, the oxidizing agent is the substance that allows another substance to be oxidized. When it accepts the electrons donated by sodium, chlorine allows sodium to be oxidized. This means that chlorine is the oxidizing agent. Notice that the oxidizing agent is reduced. The reducing agent is the substance that allows another substance to be reduced. When it donates electrons to chlorine, sodium allows chlorine to be reduced. This means that sodium is the reducing agent. Notice that the reducing agent is oxidized. Oxidation reduction reactions occur all around you every day. For example, batteries and fuel cells use redox reactions to produce electrical energy. Corrosion occurs because of a redox reaction involving metal, oxygen, and water.
What is the order of operations in algebra? How does following the order of operations help you to correctly solve problems like the one shown? Oxidation reduction reactions involve a change in the charges of some or all of the reactants. The oxidation part of the reaction occurs when charge increases. The reduction part of the reaction occurs when charge is reduced. Chemists keep track of the transfer of electrons that occurs during a redox reaction by assigning an oxidation number to each atom. In the reaction between sodium and chloride that produces sodium chloride, you can look at the oxidation numbers to see that sodium is oxidized and chlorine is reduced. Just like there are rules that help you correctly solve algebra problems, there are rules that help you correctly assign oxidation numbers. Following the rules will make this a fairly straightforward process. To begin, the oxidation number of an uncombined atom is zero. Many reactions, such as the reaction between sodium and chlorine, begin with uncombined atoms that have an oxidation number of zero. In another example, the chemical equation that describes iron rusting shows both iron and oxygen as reactants with an oxidation number of zero. The oxidation number of a monatomic ion is equal to the charge of the ion. The sodium ion in NaCl has a one plus charge, so it has an oxidation number of positive one. The chloride ion has a one minus charge, so it has an oxidation number of negative one. Using the oxidation numbers, you can see that sodium is oxidized and chlorine is reduced. The sum of the oxidation numbers in a neutral compound is zero. The redox reaction for cellular respiration produces carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide has a carbon atom with an oxidation number of positive four and two oxygen atoms that each have an oxidation number of negative two, which adds up to zero. Water has two hydrogen atoms that each have an oxidation number of positive one and an oxygen atom with an oxidation number of negative two, which adds up to zero. The sum of oxidation numbers in a compound with a net charge, such as a polyatomic ion, is equal to the charge of the ion. Ammonium is a polyatomic ion with a net charge of one plus, so its oxidation numbers must add up to positive one. Ammonium has one nitrogen atom with an oxidation number of negative three, and four hydrogens that each have an oxidation number of positive one, which adds up to positive one. Hydroxide is another polyatomic ion. It has a net charge of one minus, so its oxidation numbers have to add up to negative one. An oxygen atom with an oxidation number of negative two and a hydrogen atom with an oxidation number of positive one add up to negative one. But what about an ion such as sulfate? The oxidation numbers for sulfate have to add up to negative two and using the ion charges won't work. This is where it is important to know that some elements have the same oxidation number regardless of the compound they are in. You want to assign these oxidation numbers first. One of these elements is oxygen. With a couple of exceptions, oxygen has an oxidation number of negative two when it is in a compound or complex ion. For sulfate, you would begin by assigning oxygen the oxidation number of negative two. Four oxygen atoms, each with an oxidation number of negative two, yields negative eight. In order for the sum of the oxidation number to equal the net charge, sulfur has to have an oxidation number of positive six. In the example given in the table, nitrogen and oxygen bond to form the neutral compound dinitrogen tetroxide. The sum of the oxidation numbers in a neutral compound is zero, and oxygen has an oxidation number of negative two. You would therefore assign nitrogen an oxidation number of positive four. 
There are two exceptions to assigning an oxidation number for oxygen. One exception is peroxides. In peroxides, such as hydrogen peroxide, oxygen has an oxidation number of negative one. Another exception is fluorine. When bonded to fluorine, oxygen has an oxidation number of positive two. In compounds containing hydrogen, hydrogen usually has an oxidation number of positive one. For example, the oxidation number of hydrogen is positive one in water, in ammonia, and in glucose. However, there is one exception for hydrogen. The exception occurs when hydrogen bonds with a metal to form a metal hydride, such as in the compounds lithium hydride and sodium borohydride, which is used for bleaching wood pulp. In metal hydrides, hydrogen has an oxidation number of negative one. Group one and group two metals in aluminum have oxidation numbers equal to the number of valence electrons. For example, in both potassium nitrate and potassium nitrite, potassium is assigned the oxidation number positive one because it is in group one and has one valence electron. After assigning potassium a positive one, you would assign oxygen its negative two. You could then determine that in potassium nitrate, nitrogen would have an oxidation number of positive five. In potassium nitrite, nitrogen would have an oxidation number of positive three. Let's assign oxidation numbers to the reaction between sodium sulfate and carbon that produces sodium sulfide and carbon dioxide. We begin by assigning a zero to the uncombined carbon atom. We then assign a negative two to all oxygen atoms since there are no peroxides and oxygen isn't bonded to fluorine. Next, we assign a positive one to all sodium ions because sodium is a group one metal. Now we use the rules and calculations to determine the remaining oxidation numbers. On the reactant side, we assign the sulfur and sodium sulfate an oxidation number of positive six to make the sum of the oxidation numbers zero. On the product side, we assign sulfur and sodium sulfide a negative two to make the sum of the oxidation numbers zero. And finally, we assign carbon a positive four to make the sum zero for carbon dioxide. The oxidation numbers for sulfur decrease from positive six to negative two, so we know that sulfur is reduced. The oxidation numbers for carbon increase from zero to positive four, so we know that carbon is oxidized.